Today we're going to talk about mathematic induction. Uh, this topic can be tricky. Uh, from what I've seen, most people either get it or they don't get it. If you don't get it, don't worry too much. Uh, you really only see this in first year. Um, I don't know why they even teach it. It's a horribly messy thing to do sometimes. But nevertheless, I will show you as best I can how to do it. Um, so basically what it is, is you're going to start off with some kind of expression and you don't know if it's true or not. So you're going to basically, you're just going to use logic to figure out whether or not it's true and prove why it is or isn't. Uh, so you start off with your statement, p at n, and you're going to check that p at 1 is true. So you're just going to throw 1 in there and see if it works out the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. And if it does, that's good. You move on to the next step, where you're going to assume p at k is true. So basically, we're just going to say, it worked for 1, let's assume that it works for everything. And if it does work for everything, that means that p at k plus 1 must also be true. Because, in, let's say k is 4, it, if it works for everything, it's got to work for 5 as well, right? So this covers all our bases. And step 3, you have to become a wizard. This is the tough part. There is nothing I can tell you that will show you how to do it every time, because all the questions are different. Um, my best advice for you is to do as many examples as you can. Try to memorize the forms of the questions that your professor gives you, because whatever he gives you on the homework is most likely very similar to what he's going to give you on a test. If you know how to solve the homework, you'll probably do pretty well on the test. There's so many different kinds of these questions, there's no way I can cover all of them. So uh, yeah, do your homework, talk to your professor, talk to your classmates. Uh, just do as many examples of this as you can. And one thing that also helps is learn everything else, because there's all kinds of little tricks and stuff that can get involved here. So learn the rest of the course as well, and it'll help you with this. So let's jump into the example I have for you. Um, we're going to let f at x equal x over x plus 1. And we have fn at x equals f of f of f of x n times. If you haven't seen this before, basically what we're doing is just taking f at x and plugging it into itself recursively n times. So f1 is just f at x. f2 would be f of f at x. f3 would be f of this. Um, so we need a pattern. What we're looking for here is some statement that will say f n at x equals some function of n that'll tell you what this mess is without having to actually go through and plug this into itself a dozen times. So we're going to look for a pattern we're just going to try out here. Oops. You're going to try f1 at x, so that's just x over x plus 1. We know that. f2 at x. We're going to plug this into itself. So anywhere here you see an x, you're going to put, replace it with x over x plus 1. So it looks like this. And if you just kind of work that out and simplify it, you get x over 2x plus 1. Now f3 at x, remember, is just f of f2 at x. So now every time we see an x here, we're going to replace it with what we found in the last one, x over 2x plus 1. Right? So you put that in there gives you this, and if you simplify that out, you'll get x over 3x plus 1. Now if we look at these three things, there's a pretty obvious pattern here. You have 1x, 2x, 3x. So we're going to make a claim here that fn at x is x over nx plus 1. So we had f1, 1x, f2, 2x, f3, 3x. Right, and that's our p at n statement that we're now going to try to prove is true. So we're going to check that p1 is true. f1 at x, you put 1 in there, you get f at x. Same thing as up here. Now we're going to assume that p at k is true. So f at k equals x over kx plus 1. But what's f at k plus 1 of x? Well, remember we said before, f3 at x was just f at 
two at x. Sorry. Yeah, f of f two at x. So f k plus one of x equals f of f k at x. So you're just going to take that original formula, this thing, and put in f k at x. So you do that, it looks like this. And if you simplify that out, you can reduce it to x over k plus 1 x plus 1, which follows our form because we were looking for here, we were looking for f k plus 1, and based on our, uh, our formula here, if n is k plus 1, you should have k plus 1 times x plus 1, which is what we found. And that's just what I've shown here. So we've shown it in general that it is true for all x and k plus 1x. Therefore, it's true for everything. It works. It's true. There's That's how you do mathematical induction for this style of question. Like I said, there are dozens of different ways that um, your professor could ask you this question. I can't go over all of them. So do your homework. Talk to your professor. Talk to your classmates. Study up on this. If you don't get it, don't worry too much. You probably won't see it very much in the future. Math isn't so hard when you have the right tutor. Be sure to check out the description for links to other courses and topics. Also remember to tell your friends about the K Foley channel.